The final part of this project is here. In this part, we'll be trying to detect if a person in an image is wearing a face mask or not. So let's start by reading in a sample image that is out of the training sample images. So here in the folder sample underscore test underscore images, I have a file called 0001.jpg and this is the file path. So I'm storing it in the variable test image file path and I'm reading in this image using the IM read method from the pyplot module of matplotlib and we're assigning the read in numpy array to the imz variable. And then I'm calling the im show method to display the image in the Jupyter notebook. So if I run all of these lines of code, you can see that this is our sample image. Now that we have read in the image, we must first detect the face or the faces in the image and perform the necessary image pre-processing steps. Because remember, in the training dataset, we had performed a series of pre-processing steps such as cropping, resizing, as well as normalizing our independent variable. And we're going to be doing the same over here. So first, let us start with face detection. So for face detection, we'll be using the multitask cascaded convolutional neural networks, also called as MTCNN. MTCNN is a framework developed as a solution for both face detection and face alignment. You can learn more about it from the given Medium post, which I'll put a link in the video description as well. So you can go through the post and learn more about this neural network. This framework makes face detection as easy as we first initialize an empty CNN object, which we assign to the variable detector. Then we just call the detect faces method off of it and pass in our numpy array of pixels. So once that is done, we assign the output of this method to the variable faces and we're just printing it out over here. So if I run all of these lines of code, we will have detected all of the faces in the image. So I'll run them. So since we only have a single face in the image, we have a single dictionary over here. And in the dictionary, you can see the bounding box coordinates, the confidence of the prediction, which is 99%, and the key points, that is where the left eye is, where the right eye is, where the nose is, where the mouth left and mouth right portion is. So this is how powerful the MTCNN framework is. So now that we know how to detect faces in an image using MTCNN, let us perform face detection and image preprocessing together. So here, instead of reading in the image as an RGB image, we're reading it as a grayscale image using the imread method. And this read in numpy array is assigned to the variable imz underscore array. Again, we're initializing the detector, which is MTCNN object. Then we detect the faces in the image using the detect faces method from the MTCNN object and we get the values for the bounding box. So remember we get an array like this returned back. So here by selecting the box key, we get the values x1, x2, the width and the height of the bounding box. Then using this coordinate, we crop out the image. So that means we select from x2 to x2 plus height and from x1 to x1 plus width. So this gives out the cropped image, which we again resize by using the resize method off of OpenCV. And we pass in our cropped image as well as our resizing image size, which is 50 by 50 in this case as well. So once all of this is done, we assign it to the variable new image array. Now let's see what new image array looks like. So using the I am show method, we can pass in the new image array as our parameter and our color map is gray since we had read in the image as a grayscale image. So if I run all of these lines of code, we're reading in the image as a grayscale image, we're detecting the faces in the image, we're getting the values for the bounding box, we're selecting the portion in the image covered by the bounding box, we're resizing the image to 50 by 50 and finally we're plotting it out. So I'll run all of these lines of code. And here you can see that we have the cropped out face. Great, we've detected the face and performed all of the pre-processing steps. Now, one last thing remains. We need to reshape the shape of this image to what we're passing in to the neural network. So for this, I'm calling the reshape method off of the array and I'm passing in the shape that we want. So in this case, minus one means there is a single image, so this will be one. 50 comma 50 is the width and height and one is the color depth. So the image array gets reshaped to the shape of minus one comma 50 comma 50 comma one and it gets stored in the variable x. 
then we're normalizing the range between 0 and 1 so we just call the normalize method pass in the variable and our axis is 1 in this case so once this has been normalized we assign the normalized value to the variable x again so i'll run both of these lines of code and if you want to see what x looks like it's just an array of pixels and if i write shape you can see our shape is 1 comma 50 comma 50 comma 1 great now let us make our modal prediction so for making a prediction we just call the predict method off of our already fitted model remember you have to train the model in order to call this so once the predict method is called we just pass in the parameter as our input image and we get the prediction back so i'm printing the prediction over here and if i run this you can see that we get some kind of float values here so here, these are the probabilities of our prediction. How confident are we that the label is either face with mask or face no mask? And in this case, the label is face with mask. So to interpret these predictions, if the probability value at index zero is greater than the probability value at index one, the classification is face no mask, since we had assigned one comma zero as face no mask during training. If the probability value at index 1 is greater than the probability value at index 0, the classification is face with mask, which is this case right here, since we had assigned 0, 1 as face with mask during training. So our model is actually working correctly. You can try this out with a different example as well. But for now, I'll show you another method in order to get the final predictions quite easily. So here we can also use the np.argmax method to find the index with the highest probability value. So argmax just gives us the index of the maximum value in the passed in array. So here, since we're passing the prediction array in the argmax function of numpy, I'll run this and you can see the index is one. If it was face no marks, the index would have been zero, similar to what we had label encoded in part one. Now here's a coding exercise for you. Since you now know how to build a binary image classifier, you can now perform the following tasks on your own by extending the concepts you've learned. So first, create a multi-classification model using the above dataset by keeping all the class names, that is face with mask, mask colorful, and so on. Remember, we had filtered them down in order to just detect if a person is wearing a face mask or not, but in this case, you want to detect all of these classes. And once you've trained a multi-classification model, analyze the probabilities of predictions by using images that fall in multiple classes. So if this still feels complicated to you, you can join our TCR community on Slack and meet other students who are working on similar projects. So please feel free to sign up through this link. So that's all for this episode of Kegel Tutorials. I'll see you in the next one where we'll be diving into a new project. But until then, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to get notified about upcoming videos. I'll see you in the next episode.